How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now today I'm going to walk you through how to power a shed such as this 8x12 behind me completely off grid just by the power of the sun. We'll go through the wiring, sizing your system, installing your panels, running that wire to your shed and getting everything tied in with the correctly installed system so you meet all your needs, whether it's a storage shed, a detached garage, or even a small barn. So let's jump into it and start off by wiring up our shed. So let's go through this pretty quickly to give you a high level understanding of what it takes to get one of these all hooked up. First, we'll start off with this exterior junction box, and this is where we're gonna install a GFCI outlet with an in-use cover. This is also where we're gonna pass the power from a portable power station into the line side of that GFCI, and then back to this four x four junction box, which is on the inside and right on the other side of that exterior junction box. Then I'm gonna wire up 12-2 Romex and start to wire it to a four x four metal box here, which will house two duplex outlets right at the workbench. Then I'm gonna run the same 12-2 up to the front of the shed to two light switches, one for an exterior light and one for interior lights, two different lamp holder locations. Then we'll run the pieces of Romex, two different lines, one to a pancake box, which will go to the exterior light, and then the other side going to these two different junction box, which will be wired up just with simple lamp holders. So I can put some 100 watt equivalent LED bulbs, or if you wanna fit a larger LED to give you more light, no problem, these could handle that as well. So we'll just wire that up and then move to the exterior side where I'm going to install a simple motion detecting security light so I get some light if there's people moving around outside the shed. You could also do a light camera combo, especially if this is a shed or a building that's like on a plot of land, you go there every so often and you wanna keep an eye on things. That's another application that this would work for. So I'm using Wago 221 lever nuts. We'll bring everything back into those two light switches at the front of the shed, putting our cover on and securing everything together. Now we'll do the same thing just on the other end for the two duplex outlets. These are Legrand commercial grade outlets, standard outlets, but be, remember all these circuits are gonna be protected with the GFCI protection, which is gonna come from this piece of Romex that we're bringing out to that exterior side and then we'll tie that together with the light circuit and then also the outlets. So then from the load side of the GFCI, we're powering our circuits interior. And then from the line side, we're connecting to this black power cord you see coming out the bottom. That is gonna be connected up to the portable power station. And then that's how we're getting power to this overall shed and all the different circuits. Now on the exterior, we'll just finish that up connecting up the line side first, and that's the power cord coming there, and then the load side, which will then power all the circuits and provide that protection. Tuck everything back in, and then get our mounting screws in place, not forgetting that you just get those started, especially when you have these in-use covers, because you gotta slide them on, and then you'll go ahead and tighten all your screws and get everything buttoned up to complete the wiring side of this solar-powered shed. Now I love these DIY projects, but if you're looking to go with a much larger system and actually offset your monthly power bill to your primary residence, for most of us, that's gonna entail a much, much larger system and also tying into the grid. Here in the state of Illinois, one of the big benefits is taking advantage of net metering. Now that is most likely not a DIY project. Where I started off, there's a link in the description, just by providing my monthly power bill and a few other details on the home, within a few minutes, I was able to size my system, how large of a system do I need, and also get an estimate on the cost, and that is after the 30% tax credit that you get. Now, if that looks like it's something you want to dive deeper into, right there, they can actually start to connect you with local installers where they can get you actual quotes, and then you can start the vetting process to see if that's the right partner for you. Now, about half of us would do a roof-mounted system because maybe you don't have any area or it's just not ideal for sunlight. Here, I did a ground-mounted system. Usually, you're going to want to point directly south and also get the ideal angle. If you have a fixed angle like I do here, you do need to check your location. And there's a link in the description over to Everyday Solar where we have a tilt angle calculator. You just type in your address and then you can get your four seasons, the ideal tilt angle for your four seasons. Or if you're doing a fixed mount like this, what's the best all year round angle? Mine's somewhere around 30 degrees. So that's what I did for this ground mount that I put the two 100 watt panels on. 
Then I just brought those two panels in series, so that's gonna add up the voltages and keep the current the same. Brought those then into some MC4 connectors into a custom built PVC junction box. And then I ran my three quarter inch PVC through the ground 20 feet over to the edge of the shed. Then at the corner of the shed, right next to the GFCI outlet that we talked about, I brought an LB fitting in. Now this LB fitting gives me nice access so as I could easily pull my 10 gauge THHN conductors, two of them, and then feed those inside the shed. So let's take a look inside and then that's where it actually connects up with our portable power station. Then on the inside, it's a pretty slick little setup. We just have an EcoFlow Delta II. Now this portable power station has one kilowatt hour worth of battery capacity and then 1800 watts of output. It has a nice little display here. It's showing that I'm putting out 45 watts right now. My panels, since it's getting later in the day and they're getting blocked by some trees, are putting in zero watts, so we're not bringing anything in. And we have 80% of the battery capacity. Now it all tucks right in this corner, but you'll see here is where the AC cord comes in. That is what we're passing to that junction box and then out to the line side of the GFCI. This is what's powering the shed. And I have this EcoFlow Delta II set where it's always providing AC power all the time. So that motion sensing exterior light will always pick up if somebody is walking by. Now there are drawbacks to that, which we'll touch on in a second. And then I have this adapter cable that goes to that custom PVC junction box, two MC4 connectors, and then that's how we're bringing our solar in. So everything's contained to this one corner where I can kind of just tuck it out of the way and it doesn't take up any room within the shed and super convenient. But one common question is how the heck do you know if those panels are gonna meet your need? How much power that's gonna produce? How do you know if this overall portable power station is gonna have the power output and battery capacity for your needs? So let's do a little whiteboard session to help you work that out for your own installation. All right, so what do you need to look at? There's two really main criteria. Power, so what is the power output the system can create? And energy, what is the overall energy capacity of the battery? For power, I listed out the, the actual mower the Makita batteries for the lawn equipment, lights, and then you could do a saw, maybe you wanna get a much larger system, which AC would, would draw a lot more power. But for instance, if I look at the charger itself, I can see that the charger is gonna take a max of 700 watts for the Ego, and the Makita is gonna be 200 watts, and I know the lights pull about 40 watts. So altogether, if I charge both batteries at the same time as running the lights, my worst case scenario would be 940 watts of power output from my portable power station or the DIY setup. So this is one of the parameters that I want to keep in mind. The other side of the equation, energy. This can be a little bit more complex for a shed where you have batteries that you're not charging every day. This is not an air conditioner. This is not a refrigerator. These are something that you're gonna charge maybe once a week or uh, maybe twice a week on max. So the battery for the, the mower is actually very large, it's 672 watt hours. The Makita is much smaller at 144 watt hours. So lights, if I run them one hour per day, so I need to put a time domain on that, are gonna be 40 watt hours. If I did two hours, 80 watt hours and so on. And then here's one thing that I've missed in the past and something I tested out on this EcoFlow. If I leave the AC inverter on all the time so the exterior light can be powered, I lose in a 24 hour period, I lose 260 watt hours just to run the inverter, not doing anything, just to have that unit on and to have AC power at the shed at all time. So definitely keep this in mind and that's gonna be a little bit different for every unit, but something that you need to take into account. So I have a range on this one. That's because my non-negotiable loads, I'm gonna run lights for one hour a day and the inverter is going to draw some energy. So that's gonna be 300 watt hours. Now, if I charge both batteries once and run the lights and get the loss of that inverter, I go all the way up to 1,116 watt hours. Now, when it comes to the 200 watts of panels, what I wanna look at is how much energy am I actually going to create on the average day? So for 200 watts multiplied by four hours, which is an average amount of hours that we'll be able to deliver 
200 watts, which is what these panels can deliver in standard test conditions, is their rating. So you'll see 100 watt panels, 200 watt panels, 400 watt panels, and so on. I have two 100 watt panels. So I multiply by average four hours per day. And then I do multiply by an efficiency factor. I say I'm gonna lose 20% in my wiring and my connections and, and other parts of the system. So just being a little conservative, multiplying those out, that's 640 watt hours that I would add to the battery every day from my current solar panels. Okay, then we bring it together and we say, what do we need in the middle here? Current solar setup, I know I can create 640 watt hours on a average day. If you wanna be more conservative, what if you had a cloudy day? What if you had four cloudy days in a row? Those are something you have to take into account because this can be cut dramatically. You might only get 10% or 20% of this in the period. So do you need your battery to have enough capacity to pull you through those times where you're not getting any solar power? That is a question you're gonna ask yourself. And then output, we're gonna draw that range here. Now I am not gonna be charging these batteries every day. So my range is closer to this 300 watt hours. And specifically the one I picked was the EcoFlow Delta II. That is gonna be my power station. It's kind of a plug and play all in one unit. You can also assemble your own system but at this size class, I think it's a no brainer to go with something like the Delta II. It has 500 watts of solar input, so I am able to expand my solar if I need it. Maximum power out 1800 watts, easily meets my 940 watt need. And then the battery is 1024 watt hours. Now, if I charge all the batteries and do everything in one day and get no solar, I am gonna run into a little bit of an issue on my upper end, but overall I'm very comfortable with this and the Delta II can be expanded with another battery if I want to. It's a little pricey, but it is something I can expand. And for this type of kit, you actually can get this exact kit, the two 100 watt panels, the Delta II that I'm using and the wiring you need, all that together over at Shop Solar Kits, they have the kits put together for you to make it as easy as possible once you know what you're looking for. There is a lot of other kits to match your need, but there's a specific kit that matches exactly what we're doing on this eight x 12 shed. Now let me know if you guys have any questions on your specific setup, and I got a lot more details if you wanna dive deeper in this type of project. If you want to look in the actual wiring of the shed, a lot more details will be found in this video here, specifically that ground mount that we installed. The video right here will walk you through that. Now trenching and getting from the ground mount to the shed, we'll bring that together on the video over here. And this exact shed is a Home Depot kit. You can check out this video right here and I'll walk you through the complete build. So thanks for joining me in this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.